Hey everyone, welcome to ND Higher Dimensions. I am Dan Kay, and tonight we have Julie as our guest. She had a terrible car accident, she died, and then she's back to tell us her story, her amazing story. First of all, Julie, thank you very much for accepting our invite to be here on our channel. And I would like you to briefly introduce yourself and start talking about your experience. Yes, of course. Well, thank you, Daniel, for inviting me here today. I, it is my joy and pleasure to be able to speak about my experience in heaven and the gift of healing that God has given me from this injury. And it started with a, a car accident in 1993. Um, I was leaving a local shopping mall after I had hit a trip to Cancun with a, a friend of mine, and she and I had a wonderful time, and we came home the Sunday before for Mother's Day, and the next, then I went to work the next day, and after work, I went to the mall to get some moisturizer, and it, as I was leaving the mall, a young man who recently had gotten his license was speeding, going over 50 miles an hour. And he ran the red light and crashed right into the driver's door of my car. And the force of his car hitting mine twisted my head around on the brain stem and lacerated and severed most of it. And I didn't realize that I was an accountant before my injury. And I didn't realize your brain had a stem. Um, and what it all was so important. I mean, as my neurosurgeon said, you live in your brain stem. It's like when, they, um, when a woman is pregnant and they listen for the heartbeat. You have a heartbeat because you have a brain stem. It gives you life. You live in your stem. So since the messages weren't getting through for my brain to tell my body how to live, my body instantly began dying. But there was an off-duty paramedic who was at the scene who saw and heard the crash. And he came running over because he saw that I was knocked out and I was there was no one in control of the car because it was just rolling into the middle of the street. And it came to a rest on a grass median. And he was on his radio calling the fire station that was just one block down the street and telling them to bring the jaws of life to, so they could take me out of the car, those big you know, hydraulic arms that pull car parts off and so they could more quickly get me out. And when he got to my car, he said, um, my, my head was so far down into my chest that he knew I was not getting any air. And what they're taught is, you know, the ABCs and the A being airway. So he was trained and broke the back window, got behind me, lifted my head to start an airway. And when he did, both of my pupils were dilated, so he knew I was in real trouble. And in that time, the paramedic wagon got there, and the jaws of life took the car door off, and they got to me. And just as when we all go to the doctor, we have our vital signs taken, one of them being blood pressure. And they could not get any real reading of blood pressure, so they knew that I was really severely in trouble. And so they did. The paramedics what is called a scoop and run where the jaws of life takes a car seat out they scoop you in an ambulance and run you to the hospital and in the ambulance on the eisenhower expressway on the way to Loyola university hospital in chicago outside of the chicago area uh, my body completed the dying process and i actually just spoke to paramedics and police officers at a festival that i was at and they said oh yes you died in the ambulance and I went into agonal breathing or your last breaths and then you lose control of all your bodily functions and just release everything and that is your body dying but unlike a lot of the stories you hear it's got to legally be um, a doctor who has to declare you dead and so um, the paramedics always uh, call ahead to the hospitals to tell them what they are receiving. And so they had a neurosurgeon waiting to do an EEG test on my brain to determine the life or death status. And he did. And it was determined that I did not have enough brain function to keep me alive. So in most states, I could have been legally declared dead. But in Illinois, we have a law 
that your next of kin, your family member, your caregiver has to be contacted before you can be legally declared dead. And so they had to put me on life support and call my mom and dad in to make the decision to keep me on or take me off. And now they said that um, really in these times that because I was dead and there was no brain function that they don't know that the same choice would be made today to put you on life support but it really is up to the physicians and my physician my neurosurgeon who has since passed um, of parkinson's a lovely good christian man um he said that he believed that it is not up to him that it is god's choice and so he put me on life support and uh, the chaplain called my parents and and my dad, we recently lost my father too soon to cancer. And his oncologist said, well, when he was in his last week of life in hospice, you know, he said, oh, Mr. Papievas, I'm sure this, you know, diagnosis is the worst day of your life. And he said, no, receiving that phone call about Julie's crash was the worst day of my life. It, it just changes everything and it affects everyone in your life everyone who loves you it's it's so devastating and my parents were brought into a room at the hospital with the chaplain and doctor and a doctor and a nurse and they were told that 96 percent of people with my injury die within the first 24 hours and the four percent of people who live live in a semi-vegetative state being toileted and fed for approximately a year or so, a very short period of time, and then pass away. And, you know, I was 29 years old when I was injured. I was training for a biathlon. I've always been an athlete. And, um, you know, my parents said, she's young. We have to give her, you know, a chance. My goodness. And they did not know, actually, that I had died and had an experience during that time. Of course, because I was... I was in a coma for six weeks mm -hmm. or in a coma for six weeks. And after a month, um, they wanted to put me into a nursing home to just kind of let me pass away. And my parents fought and said, no, we have to give her a chance to put her in a coma stimulation program. We just have to do everything we can do, you know, to give her life. And um, so they moved me after a month from Loyola to Mary and Joy Rehab Hospital. And after I was there a couple of weeks, I just woke up. I just woke up. But I was, I was so sick. I mean, you know, if you've ever seen like an animal who's on the street or somewhere and they're injured and they're crying, that was really mm -hmm. all I could compare myself to at that point. I woke up, excuse me, and um, I... My, my left side was paralyzed from head to toe, inside and out. And some things still internally are, like my intestines, you know, need help to function through some digestive enzyme, vitamins. But I, my left eyelid was closed. And when they lifted it up, I could only see shadows. I couldn't speak until they did a few voice back surgeries. Um, of course, my left arm and leg were paralyzed and my lung and my intestines and kidneys and so I just laid there and I, I I was I just but the first memory I had was heaven and so I knew that God was paying attention and I was so thankful about that but I was like I said when I compare myself to a small animal who was injured I, I it was a cry that I started crying that it's something that I had never heard before for myself and I couldn't stop. And, and so they put me on medication because I couldn't participate because I was crying. So I, I was, I was so sad that I had to live in a body like that. And I kept asking God, why, when I was in such a beautiful place as heaven, would you bring me back? to know that I was in a body that was like this, so injured and I couldn't do anything. Yes, Daniel, you want to say No, anything? no, but but you were sad, for sure. You were sad with the situation, yeah. it's very, but uh, were you more sad because, uh, as you were going to tell us, uh, you came back from somewhere or because you were aware of your situation 
were you aware of the situation? You were, did you remember the accident at that time? Did you remember what happened? Were you aware of your body situation, the risks for the future, the risk of never uh, moving again, etc.? Uh, how exactly was all of this in your mind? So I was when I woke up, the first memory I had really was heaven. After I was so devastated about I did this like mental scan of my body and knew how terribly physically injured I was. Um, I was thinking very clearly, but I was physically I, I could not do anything. I felt the tube that I was being fed through everything diapers. And, and I thought, there was heaven and and I will tell you as I tell you more about my experience in heaven um, there was the hope of what my deceased grandmothers had told me and so I had that hope that I knew that God was paying attention so I had the hope of that but it was such a great question you asked I was also thinking how will I live I you know was a single woman and I was on my own and I thought how am I going to live? How am I going to work? I mean, I was an accountant and I was a account executive for Estee Lauder and accountant for Price Waterhouse and McDonald's Corporation. And I thought, how on earth will I work and do anything? And how could I do anything with a body that's this disabled? So I was thinking all of that, but he had the hope of heaven. And so I didn't know exactly what... And like I said, I will tell you when I tell you my what? whole story, it will make more sense. Would you like me what? to tell you my story yes, now? Yes, go ahead. Tell us. Yeah, tell us. Well, I come back a little bit for the accident moment. And did you see the accident? And what did you oh. see next? How, how did you see the accident or not? And tell us then. Okay, what so my neurosurgeon explained to me that it would be too much stress for my body to ever be able to remember that. So your brain blocks it out. And how we said your brain works is that in sleep wake cycles. So the last thing, I don't remember going to work on Monday. I remember going to sleep the night before my brother drove me home from my parents. Um, after celebrating Mother's Day, and we were talking about my wonderful trip and uh, I was preparing for work the next day. I don't remember that's the last memory I had was talking to my brother and the next memory I had was waking up from the coma. I didn't remember anything. And he said, I won't because it's the protection of my brain that your body does that. So you don't have a memory. And you had, that. you remember the heavens a situation that you are going to tell us. You remembered yeah. when after, after you came back, you immediately remember the experience that you had. So yes. Was yes. Immediately, I remember that. And I was so grateful for that because the suicide rate for my injury is 85% because people are so devastatingly injured when it's brainstem. And so, you know, I, I feel I'm so yeah. great. If God did not give me the gift of hope of heaven, I, I, don't, I don't, you know, my, my neuropsychologist and, you know, the things that I've had done and they've done brain mapping and things. And they're like, you are such a positive person. You know, I don't ever believe I could have taken my life. I could have never showed up and happened again and said, hi God, you know, I'm here, I'm back. And, and I could never have hurt the people who love me by taking my own life. And I think that's something that people really need to consider. But, um, I did, when I woke up, I, I did feel so devastatingly helpless. So I, I do understand. And, I remember, so when I went to, when I was there, all of a sudden in this area that I knew was heaven and I knew I was there because I was dead and I was happy to be there. It was perfect peace. There were no floors or ceilings or walls, except there was this very bright light and there was a very narrow aisleway to my left hand side. And that the brightest light was on the floor coming up the walls of the IOA. And that's where I was drawn to go. I was going to get down there. And I wanted, I knew that I would meet God down at the end of the IOA. And seriously, the question I was going to ask him was, 
why did you make the always so narrow? How do when a lot of people <laughs> die in a natural disaster, how do they all fit through there? I was thinking that. And so the next thing I knew, I was before my two deceased grandmothers. And it's not like I like walked to them, or but I was suddenly before them. And they looked to me to be like, you know, my grandmother's elderly women. And they looked happy and healthy now, like before they passed away. And they were happy to see me. I was happy to see them. And I said, okay, come on, girls, let's go. And I was pointing to my, with my right hand, I was pointing to the aisle way. And they said, well, no, you can't go with us. You have to go back. And I suddenly felt nervous and I said well I can't go back because I'm not physically okay and I was pointing to my left side that was paralyzed and my grandmother said with these we all had blue eyes and her eyes were these endless tunnels of blue light and I felt God's presence and she said your body will heal and then I felt like I was wrapped in a big warm blanket I was wrapped in the Holy Spirit I could feel it I just felt that protection and then she said, go back and be happy. And so that's why I have a website, go back and be happy.com. I have a book, go back and be happy. Everything is go back and be happy with me because that is what my grandmother told me in heaven. And then the next memory I had was waking up in the hospital from my coma after that. And I did not want to leave there. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. When, uh, when you were we were there, so you already knew what had happened to you, physically speaking. Isn't so that you amazing? Had yes. yes, that's amazing. I know, I've thought about the two, Gina. I was, uh, you know, I'm like, how did I know to point to my left side and saying I'm not physically yes. okay? It would, I, I, I know I've thought about that many times. And, and I've actually spoken to many groups that do work worldwide with near-death studies. And they said, it's amazing. We've never heard a story where God and the Holy Spirit, um, and they, they appeared to be, you know, the trilogy that they appeared to be in your grandmother's. And, you know, it, but I felt God's presence in my grandmother's eyes. I knew it really wasn't my grandmother. I knew that I was really, I couldn't take my eyes off her eyes. And they were endless tunnels of blue, warm, wonderful light. And I knew that that was God. I did. And I felt that. And I, the feeling of the Holy Spirit, that's a living spirit that I carry with me every day because you know, like I said, the suicide rate is 85%. And I literally could not do one thing to care for myself. And if I did not have the the guidance and the guard protection of the Holy Spirit, I feel like I don't know how that I would have felt that I could do that, you know, on my own without that kind of protection. So I was so grateful for all of it. So grateful. When you when you when you talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, you, well, you saw your grandmother, correct? Yes, both of them, both grandparents. Both of them, your, your, both yes. grandmothers. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, interesting. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. Uh, and you. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and you saw also you saw a Holy Spirit. You saw the Holy Spirit. Oh, explain a little better. How is the Holy Spirit, and how you felt that it was the Holy Spirit? Uh, how, how is I, that? I felt when my grandmother said, "Your body will heal." All of a sudden, I felt this. It felt like a big, warm blanket, tightly wrapped around me, and I, so just, it's I just knew that it was the Holy Spirit, and that I was protected. Yeah, so it, it, you didn't see. You no, felt, yeah. you felt like something around you protecting yeah. you, and you yeah. knew it was the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Very yes. interesting. And I, and I remember receiving. Excuse me. I remember receiving the um, my confirmation. I was raised Catholic, and so I remember receiving my confirmation, and I was so excited to 
become to like be an adult in the church with receiving the holy spirit i've always been such a fan of the holy spirit as a living spirit i thought wow it was always such a a great thing for me i've always felt that i've had such a special relationship with the holy spirit and so i just yeah i still feel that way and i'm so grateful for it mm -hmm. very good spirit every day while you were there yeah. uh, you had you, you saw your body, you had a body, or, uh, or, or how was that? Did you see your body? No, Did you feel I, your I, body? I really, I really didn't. And but when I was pointing, when I was pointing to my left side that was paralyzed, I saw an arm, my right arm doing that, and I saw that it was pointing to like a body. So, but I, I don't remember like feet or legs i don't remember walking to my grandmother's it's just in in the in remember when i said that it was perfect peace it's just such an amazing you it's 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 like something in existence that is nothing here that we've experienced so it's really not like your physical body i i, mm -hmm. I, I know i'm probably not doing a great job explaining i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it, it's not easy because <laughs> it's not our day, day situation. Yes, and that's why it's, you know, I very, not too often, but every once in a while, someone will say, well, could you have been dreaming? And I said, no. And they said, well, how do you know? And I said, well, I dream. So, <laughs> you know, I know what no this was this was such a perfect piece and such a wonderful gift but yeah uh, talk about this piece because uh many many people that have uh, uh md experience comes back exactly saying about this piece uh feeling and uh amazing it's very hard but try to explain a little bit more how is that how do you feel that? How? It's, um, so when I say perfect, it's, um, well, I think I'm a, a natural born warrior a little bit. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just, I want to make sure things are taken care of properly. And, um, and it, it's just, it's just such a perfect, it, it's when, like, now, so I grew up with a pool in my backyard, and so I've always been a swimmer. And 10 years ago, uh, I did a triathlon. I've always been an athlete. And so, um, and it's interesting, I can't do freestyle, but I can do backstroke, and I can do other strokes because of some of, and it's funny, just because of the disability to my shoulders and things. Um, but um, it, it's just sometimes when, you know, you look at, um, a body of water, be it a pool or the ocean, maybe more the ocean, and you look out and it's just so quiet and peaceful. It's it's just a peace like that kind of peace. And you know how um, it, it when you hear stories of the Bible, when God actually um, walked on water, and it, it's that kind of, where you can't almost imagine that in, in your mind today, him walking on water, that kind of imaginable truth is really what heaven feels like. If that's about, does that help at all? <laughs> Very good. No, it helped a lot. Oh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> I'll explore a little bit just <laughs> because yes. we yes. that didn't have it. Uh, that's that's the opportunity to ask and even to compare because uh, everyone has a, a little different uh, experience when they have yeah. MD, but there are a lot of in common, a lot, a lot of things in common. So, yeah, yes, uh, yes. but Absolutely. what did you see? Uh, you saw your grandmothers, you saw a, a tiny way on your front, but did you see like light buildings or grass or trees or something else or a sky or not? What, what, what do you remember that you saw? I remember, I don't remember grass or trees. Um, I do remember that everything was light, white light. 
beautiful, pure, just pure light. And the, it, it, it was, and I know this kind of sounds like the movies, but it was very cloud-like almost. It was, mm -hmm. there wasn't anything really finite except the Iowa to the left-hand side was the only finite walls that there were. Everything was really more cloud-like and open. And okay. it, it was just, yeah, you're just surrounded by pure light. And like I said, I knew the moment I was there, I was there because I was dead. And I was happy to be there. I felt like I had gone home. And, you know, talking to my mom and dad about my experience, well, they said that they kind of knew that something was to happen because I was so peaceful about the injury and all that had gone on with me. And, you know, my dad said, well, we're all God's children. We all come from him and we will all go back to him. And, you know, we're all here to live this life of, you know, it's more difficulties and things. And it is perfect when we go home. That And he said, you did go home. And that's why I felt that way. And I said, it felt exactly like that, that I went home where I belong. And yes, I was happy to be there. <laughs> Great. And when you talk, or your grandmother talk to you, yes. Uh, do you remember if you like uh, you you heard her her like uh, like we are here, or it was more telepathic? Uh, 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 did you hear in your mind, or like here, or did you should she talk or not? How no, the lips did not move. And like I said, it was really, it was coming from, I felt that the language, the words were coming for, through her eyes in those beautiful, endless tunnels of blue light. And so that's why I knew that it was God who was telling me my body would heal. And my grandmother would love to believe it was her idea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she, was, she was lovely. And, and uh, But I knew that it was God's message. I knew that it was him. I knew that okay. it, those were his words. And so she didn't why. have to move the lips no. so you could hear. Yes, Amazing. she did not move her lips, correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Correct. Yeah. And when she told you, okay, <laughs> but uh, you can go you can't go further, you will have to go back. You have to go back. I was upset. Uh, yes, I was upset. and and how is that I not, I was not happy. <laughs> I was not happy about that. No. No, I, I, that's why I, you I, I thought, feel well, that you had a choice. I'm not physically okay. I thought, well, maybe that'll convince them and they'll let me stay. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and for any instance, did you feel that you had a choice? Like, uh, well, I, I, maybe I have a choice or you yeah. didn't have, or how, how did you feel that? Well, I, I, I did feel like I had a choice. Um, and that's why I thought I could convince them by saying that I'm not physically okay. Mm -hmm. So I thought I could convince them. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe. Like, I, can't, I, can't, I said I can't go back because I'm not physically okay. And I thought, well, that'll do it. That'll convince them. <laughs> and so, so, I mean, so to me, in, in some aspects, it felt very humanistic. You know what I mean? And there, in that respect that I was thinking, well, why did God make this Iowa so narrow? I'm going to have to ask him that when a lot of people. Do. So in that way, I was really thinking very, you know, human thoughts. And so I think maybe that's why um, I was not, you know, fully that I was not going to go to heaven because I was still partially of this world and this life. How long did you take to recover? I mean, to to begin walking again and talking again? Well, that's why they wrote a book because I I hit you know like my story in heaven, and so I thought, okay, I'm going to start walking. And my my dad um, was over six six. He was a a big gentleman and um, very tall and um, and just a big guy, um, a good Lithuanian man. And so, um, he, I said, dad, I want to start walking. And he said, 
okay he's so he held me up by the back of my scrub pants and um and I really wasn't walking per se but he was holding me mm -hmm. up and I was taking steps and that was actually just two weeks after I had gotten up from my coma and so I started from there and then it went on physical therapy um occupational therapy and you know use my arms and legs and my balance and I mean, eight weeks pointing my foot forward and getting the right flexation in my ankle, on my left side. I mean, it took like 12 to 15 years of outpatient therapy. It was, it was a lot of work and the hardest work I've ever done really. But I, and I did not have any, I only could see shadows out of my left eye because I still have a dilated pupil on my left, in my left eye because the damage of the nerves around it, my optic nerves. But now through the many years of eye rehab, I have 20-40 vision in that eye, but I wear special contacts, um, and I've worn prism lenses for years, and I, I call all the rehabilitation people God's little elves because they literally help put me back together again. It's amazing how they help you to facilitate, you know, use in your body with your injury, and um, they said because your spinal cord has a good memory, you know, that's how I began swimming again, and I've always been an athlete. And my last physical therapist was training for a marathon, and that's one thing I could have done before, but she said, you're not going to have your body's not going to have the stamina to do that. And so she said, but we can do an indoor triathlon where things are timed and it's safe that you're not in the open water, and my neurosurgeon didn't want me to do that. So, um, so I did an indoor triathlon, and... I finished and I finished in the middle of my age group and I was happy about that. And um, we trained for a year for that. It was a lot of work, and, but I was happy that I could do that. So it was a personal um, personal goal for me if, as being an athlete my whole life. So it felt good to be able really? to do Well, that. you said that your grandmother told you you'll be healed. Yes. You are going to to heal your body, so you came back and you remember that, and that kept you like uh, with your faith. Yes, on, say yes. It kept so, me forward to try her. Talk a little bit about that because when we see a miracle, a real miracle like this. Yeah. When you have no chance of surviving, then no chance of coming back from coma, then no chance of coming back and don't have, uh, well, your body messes up for, uh, forever. And right. so you heal, you heal, you heal. And we know that the faith, that our thoughts, that when we have a goal, when we believe, uh, we can make... Uh, so God let us make some some miracles by ourselves. Yes. Say. Yeah, and you know, you, yeah. yeah, you believe that your he healing was also credited because of your faith? Yes, I do believe because I, I do have a strong faith in God and was raised with that um, and always have been a strong believer. Um you know, I, I always did as, um, as a person, as just an average person, I always did wonder what happened when we passed away, we died. And I'm like, you know, I'm, you know, it's, it, you know, you just wonder exactly what happens and what the experience in heaven is. And, you know, you know, what we hear about in the Bible and what we pray for and, but you don't know. And, um, and when I was there after experiencing it, I thought, I, I feel just, I, I'm so peaceful now. I just, I feel like I, I, I don't have any anxiety about it. I will be happy when the day comes when I am able to go back to heaven. And I believe we are all called in our time to go. And I will be very joyful to go back. But I live now very even stronger in my faith because I know that God allowed for this miracle of healing from such a devastating injury. And, and I also speak to the schools 
for injury prevention and a program called Think First for the neurosurgeons. And I speak to the kids and I tell them, I'm like, you know, you guys really, and after everybody going through COVID and there's a lot of depression and I understand that. And, and I said, but there is God and there is hope. And, you know, you really have to, he wants a relationship with you. And I actually had a great aunt who was a nun and she would come and visit our home sometimes on the weekend, have dinner with us from the convent. She would come and she would just say, talk to Jesus. Jesus is your brother. Just have conversations with Jesus. And so I thought, okay. So I always felt like I could talk to Jesus. So I was raised doing that. And I feel like I've had a relationship and, um, I think, and that's what he wants with everybody. I'm not special. I am like everyone else. We are all God's children. We are all equally special in his eyes. And you wrote this book, uh, this book, Go Back and Be Happy. Well, the first and woman was Mar Mar Margot McSweeney, who wrote the original version. And we had, um, we actually hired a person, both of us, to, um, to go in And, and look at all of the medical records so we could truthfully tell the story. I never wanted anything to be said that was not truthful about the healing. Mm -hmm. So we did that. And Margaret McSweeney wrote the first version. And then Jim Sullivan, um, when my father passed, um, he's, he's a good father. I met him through his daughters and lovely family man and um, church going man. And, and so he wrote the um an additional dedication to my dad and um we put the second version where it's out on amazon now and it's available through my website to go back and be happy but it's available on amazon too so we had to republish that way because it was first published through lion um lion hudson and monarch and it was out all over the world and we wanted to make sure that the new version was available to everybody in the world because This is God's story. Everyone in the world should be able to read it. So, for sure. And your uh, your website link and uh, a link for your book too are here in the description of this video. Uh, please check, take a look. It's an amazing book, uh, and uh, I, I'm yeah. sure that uh, rich of details. And we would love that. So it's here in yeah. the description if you want more information and about your website too. What changes in your life? Because today you do many more things. I know <laughs> that. And, <laughs> and uh, it seems that everything that you do today, all these other things you do, is related to your experience. So yeah. can you say that your life changed? You changed it. Or how was that? Well, I, I really, I mean, I, I have my degree in accounting. I was actually just going to get my MBA. And that when I got into my injury, I actually volunteered before my injury for Special Olympics for disabled children. I love to, to work with them. And afterwards, even I've done work with many dis, um, disability organizations and work for the brain and spinal cord injury associations and and they actually at Loyola university hospital asked me to be a volunteer in their trauma support group so i could work with family members of severely injured patients and you know spending time with them and a gentleman the chaplain in that group he said you know maybe you should go you know into pastoral counseling and i'm like no I don't know that I want to do that. And I, I said, I feel like really this is my, my, my job is to tell God's story and to relate it to as many people as possible because we all need to know that these miracles exist today and that God is everywhere and still performing these miracles in our lives. And so I feel like that is the work that I concentrate on doing. And I'm very happy yeah. doing it. I always say that nothing happens for nothing, and nothing is for yeah. nothing. So <laughs> there's a yeah. reason why you went there. There's a reason why you are back. And yeah. uh, I'm sure that sharing our story here with us tonight is one of these reasons. And so I'm really, really okay. grateful uh, for you accepting our uh, invite to be here to share all of this because it helps many people uh, to see, well, have faith, have faith yeah. in life, 
Have yeah. faith in God. But I remember before my injury, you know, having the questions that everyone does while these things happen in this world. But if you think about the history, the long history of this world, there has always been a great deal of unrest and changing. And I think that when people have gone to God, I think that that's really what, once again, people we have gotten away from and have to get back to is having a relationship with him. And you can have a relationship. You don't have to go to a certain church. You don't have to go to a church. You can go. He is wherever you are. God is wherever you are. There's, I mean, I, I go to church every Sunday because communion is very important to me. But I believe God is wherever you are. And, I, you know, I talk to him in the car and just in the grocery store. And, and, and I feel like that is really what he wants is to have a relationship with us. And it is, it is completely available to every single person completely available and he does not like all of the unrest that's going on he does not like hatred that is not who he is at all and so talk to him and ask him for first of all be thank him for what we do have because we all have so many reasons to be thankful start with that and then ask for him to help you with things that you may not know how to do and you may not understand. Ask him to help you and he will. he will. And Julie, I heard that you are preparing a documentary. Is that uh, correct? Is that true? That is true. Um, I was actually, um, a producer reached out to me and um, Amazing. he won eight Telly Awards, which is the equivalent for documentaries of Academy Awards. I mean, a wonderful lovely documentary filmmaker uh, who owns a production company. And so we're uh, putting together um, a funding site, a Christian funding site, and so that we can put the money together that's needed to produce the documentary. And she would love to do it because, and I believe that's the best way, the truest way of telling the story. And this is what she specializes in, is telling true stories. And so, um, well telling them well because she's won so many great awards so i'm honored that she reached <laughs> out to me and so um yes so we're going to work on that and we haven't started the the site yet but um if you keep checking either my website or i know daniel if you want to put up some information sure um, no no your story for sure deserves to 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 have a documentary in, in details because uh it's very important to people to 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 know to to listen to that to increase their faith and uh, the story itself is amazing. So if people want to help with your documentary, they can. So they can follow your website. Is that correct? They can see in the description yes. here. Follow your website because there you will you will add ways of helping with that. Is that correct? That's correct. And also, I have um, a book a book coming out, Guideposts, which is a huge publisher, um, is writing a book about my uh, death experience. And it's coming out November 1st, and they're going to be doing a lot of marketing and things. And so they went to work with the documentary company. And so people are going to be seeing more of me than they can stand. And actually, we've set up a separate guidepost page on my website and there's a direct link to that so you can read more about that and they do a lot of wonderful work too um, with injuries and and conditions of the brain and spinal cord too and it, it's it's a wonderful organization so they've been lovely people to work with too so that's going to be coming up as well and um, so yeah you can get all that on my website but I forgot to talk about the book too additionally so thank you for a um, lot of good yeah, news <laughs> yeah, a lot so of good gonna, news. Yes, well, congratulations. Very good. Very good. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank so, you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you back on our channel and your time. Yes. And I, I appreciate everything that you've done today and inviting me. I, 
I couldn't be more pleased. So it's such an honor. Thank you. I appreciate I it. Thank I you very much. Thank you. Have See a good you. day. See you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.